we grew a whole bunch of pipeline fighters. We took on the Keystone XL pipeline when folks told us that there was no hope in stopping it. We took on the Keystone XL pipeline when they told us that farmers, ranchers, and tribal allies and climate advocates would never get along. They would never have each other's back. They thought they, they could divide us. They thought that the divide and conquer technique that these big oil corporations and political operations often use would work. We proved them wrong. We didn't just stop Keystone XL. We made sure that we stood in solidarity with Line 3, with Dapple, with Jordan Cove, with Bihalia, with Atlantic Coast, with Penn East, with MVP. Some of those pipelines have been stopped, not because of the actions of Joe Biden, but the actions of people on the ground whose feet were firmly planted on the land in order to protect the water. When we first started the fight against Keystone, we were up against the entire government of the United States, the Canadian government, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the only people that were on the front line saying no to a pipeline that was going to risk not only the Sandhills in the Ogallala Aquifer, but the land of so many of our indigenous brothers and sisters. The only people that were there saying no were farmers, were ranchers, and were indigenous people. We did not have big name Democratic officials standing next to us. President Obama and Secretary Clinton at the time were for it, but it was because of the power of the movement that we created that stopped that pipeline. Eight years ago, we decided that we were gonna plant Ponca sacred corn inside the Keystone XL route as prayers and medicine for the land. The Keystone route was crossing the Ponca Trail of Tears. And the State Department and our federal government was not acknowledging that they were going to be crossing a cultural resource. So we decided to do what we know best in the Midwest, plant corn. That corn was put up as prayer and medicine for the land. We then had that corn certified by the government as a cultural resource of the Ponca tribe of Nebraska and Oklahoma. And we have been planting it every year since. We're harvesting that corn on Saturday. It'll be the eighth year that we do that. The beautiful thing about this story is that Art and Helen Tandrip, who have caretaked that land for decades and has been passed down through generations, they acknowledge that their fight was in solidarity with indigenous fights. They acknowledge that the government took their land by eminent domain, but the government a long time ago took the land away from the first caretakers, the tribal nations that walked this planet long before any of us. And so what Art and Helen decided to do was deed that land back to the Ponca tribe. This pipeline has so many negative things. But the one thing that it's done is it's brought people together in a common goal to defeat this thing, save our waters, save our lands, protect the health of our people. This is about land justice. Land justice for tribes so their sovereign rights are protected. Land justice for farmers and ranchers so their land isn't taken by eminent domain for private gain. This is about land justice. And President Biden made a promise to us. He said, elect me and I will make sure to act on climate. And he did on Keystone XL. We praise and thank him for that. But when he says he's going to build back better, he needs to do better by our communities. He needs to do better by protecting our water. He needs to do better by protecting our land and he needs to finally connect the dots. That if you're going to stand on the global stage and say that you are standing up for climate change, 
and that you are taking action against the climate crisis, that starts with stopping pipelines. Yes.